Yo, 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 what's happening? It's your boy DC on Fly. Are we tired of not knowing what you're gonna cook? Are you stressed for time? HelloFresh offers 10 to 20 minute meals, low prep recipes, and quick breakfasts and lunch, perfect for your busy schedule. HelloFresh can make ease the stress and make it simple just for you. You get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need with customizable orders every week. You can easily change your delivery day or food purchases and skip a week whenever you need. The Monterey Jack burgers were amazing and I made it myself. I'm talking about <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Woo! All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs. That's right, tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 85South14 and use code 85South14 for 14 free meals. Good gracious, where were you guys when I needed something to eat, including free shipping? That's HelloFresh.com slash 85South14. Hey man, look, October 29th at the Donald L. Tucker Center in Tallahassee, Florida. Family Hall come weekend. Come to the show Friday, then you know go to the game Saturday. Can we go to the game? We, if we stay down there. Oh, I think I want to stay. No, I think I want to stay. Get your tickets at 85timeshow.com. The, the Brazilians had the best ass. Why it ain't like an Australian butt lift? <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, Alabama, Mississippi, but Dominican, like but Dominican is known for having that. Listen, ass. I ain't seen all the asses, but I will say that the pictures I've seen from Brazil, they are top three. Real. From the carnivals and stuff like yes. that. Yes. They, they got some bubble butts down there, they say. But I wouldn't, would you want a fucking Mississippi butt lift or a Brazilian butt lift? Which one sounds more. I don't know. There's some fat asses in Mississippi. Are there some good surgeons, though? No, nah, there's some. These is just straight cornbread, black eyed peas. I never, when we grew up down the South, we never knew women didn't, didn't, didn't get surgeons. Because they was like all that. Thick, Everybody just they all had big asses and yeah. big titties. I mean, that's still the case with a lot of women now. I don't know why women go get these surgeries, especially if you ain't had no kids. You should just wait on your, on your mama body. That's when the ass and the titties show up after them babies. So are you saying? that women don't get ass from doing squats. They get ass from their jeans because their mama had the jeans. No, I'm saying they get ass after they done had two or three babies. Like, God got another body for but, most women that's gonna come no, on. later on in life. Everybody know that. Hold on. The finest motherfuckers was skinny as hell 10 years ago. <laughs> Them the thickest ones. <laughs> Can I tell you what happened with that little boy? Can I tell you what happened? What? Can I tell you what happened? Okay. At homeboy. We ain't gonna say his name. He tried to, he used to act like he was a doctor, had professional advice, talking about he knew how to get chicks thick. First, you get her pregnant. Two months later, Megan had an abortion. He did that three times, six months, had a dime piece. No kids, no stretch marks, stallion. I didn't approve of it, but that's why I didn't want to say his name. That's $900. Don't you ask me how I know the math. 72,000 and 900, ain't it? I've that? heard that's about $900, what you've just described. For real? I thought it was more than that. That should easily, that, you know how much cornbread you could just fucking eat and get the same ass? Well, I'm not, I think the perception is wrong. Just like y'all said about being tall, what? I don't think women want tall men. I what think, they want then? I think women want men with big dicks and it's associated with tall men sometimes. That's what I think. And I don't think no women Who got no Who told you that? They got dicks so Women too? say that, women say they like big dicks, you know they what I'm saying? Dick. If any women out here like, if a woman don't like a man with a big dick, she ain't shit, but a little girl who never faced her fears. And God put up, that's all, I ain't even got to talk about it. I'm going to get baptized this Sunday. But I'm just saying, I'm listening to y'all. Do you understand that women have so many dick substitutes? That it? Yeah. Yes. Huge yes. dick substitutes. Yes, right. they do. And I'm, I'm just saying what I think. What? What I just said. You, you know already right? got dick surgery, too. You can extend your dick. What's going on out here, man? Look, ain't no coming back from that. You just, they put rods in your shit or something. I don't know how it worked. I ain't clicked the link. I, I wasn't either. I, I thought that pictures. was spam. I thought it was a Facebook spam, no, man. I didn't know that shit real. was real. I feel like I'm in a joint. Just for real. Damn. I just think, I think if you could, if you could drop 70, like if a girl go, I don't want to fuck with you, I don't like short niggas, and then you decide to drop 72 racks, pick you up a quick three, four inches, 
you should be allowed to come right back. No questions asked. That's some, that's some. She want to play 21. That's, that's some no bullshit. Diff, that's no different than that. Why the fuck plans? would you, why would you be hung up on what one bitch like? The same reason other people get, that's the whole point of Life. fucking plastic surgery. I'm it's not going to fix myself other people. for one bitch when I know it's, it's, Ten more that already. So like, you never done that. You never. You never done something that, that you don't want to like. You seen me. You have, I ain't say you changed. I'm you, just saying in general. You have self esteem, so this ain't for you. Oh. But I'm saying That's like, like even if you. I did spend seventy two thousand on whatever, I'm not gonna go talk to the same motherfucker. I'm gonna go try these new motherfuckers out. Why would <laughs> I spend seventy two thousand dollars on some new legs to talk to the same motherfucker who didn't like my old legs? Because you they mean, like the legs. I'm gonna talk else. to somebody you, okay. who ain't never seen so then, me before. This new me. <laughs> Tall me don't even like you. You lying. Short me was fucking with you. No. <laughs> Close, you're lying. You think so? It's the same. Height ain't no different than bread. You was broke, a girl wouldn't fuck with you. Like, remember when you didn't have a car in high school? And you, you think I didn't car. double back and fuck all them women that I couldn't fuck when I was broke? Somebody get this man. Somebody get this man, man. I spent that block. All of them got knocked off. So this is the same shit. And then when they started you liking me, hobble? I was like, nope. Yeah. I remember. You know, nope. you gonna get, you gonna get your height, and you gonna hobble the block. No, I'm not. You, you know, what? nigga, if I wake, I go get this shit, and I'm six three. I don't give a fuck about nobody that I already met. I want to talk to them women who told me they not interested because they, they, I was, you know, what I'm saying, I'm going over there. I don't know none of them. I don't know their <laughs> names. I don't know what they're into. I want to hear their stories. <laughs> Wait, you not going? Number one, if you first add of too all, much height. height ain't never stopped me from having any woman. Not you, but Gary Coleman was out here. You know what I'm saying? But he had on. three wives, nigga. Yeah, after he got on with different strokes. Nothing's impossible. I'm just saying. So you saying that different height surgery stroke. is for men who don't believe in their own abilities? Height yes, surgery sir. is for motherfuckers who like experimental shit. Find because they don't know the side effects of that shit. It's too new. Fuck around and get some new legs. Now you can't fly. <laughs> Every time you get on the fucking plane, it's excruciating pain. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know that. You wouldn't have known. Exactly. Now your body and your mind hasn't accepted these new legs, and you can't even sit down and write the shit. Mm -hmm. And the only yeah, way you, you gotta found go out. You a whole physical therapy. Exactly. You had to go through a whole physical therapy. And just like you said, fuck, fuck around. I was thinking about the surgery. Roy, why the fuck, why are you I'm thinking about the surgery? I'm just surgery. saying, I'm you just fuck around and get the surgery, just like Roy said. He trying now to get your it. arms ain't even long enough to piss right. You just got to take your whole pants down and just stand up there. Oh, you got to sit down and pee. You got to hold on to something. You got to put your legs out with your shit. <laughs> you just all on the toilet. It's fucked up. <laughs> nah, I don't do that shit. Roy, where you start doing comedy at? Birmingham. Birmingham. At the start of hell. Or was it another was, spot? Well, you know, I split time because I was still at FAMU. So. Man, what made you, you go to FAMU? So you got to answer all this shit. Because we, we always show love to the HBCUs. And you know, Clayton went to FAMU. Mm -hmm. Clayton was right behind me, man. You graduated Clayton. from Alabama, right? In, in Birmingham High School. Yeah. You ain't go, why you go to Alabama State, Alabama AM? Tell you why. Come on with it. So, moms went to AM. My pops used to be a professor at AM. He and Pops win like the Nobel Peace Prize or something. Uh, he, he did a lot of, he, he was for the people. Oh, okay. He was definitely for, he won a lot of journalism. He got yeah, NABJ pops, Lifetime Achievement. I say, let me find out you know Reverend Woods down there. Yeah, Abraham Woods? Yeah, my Pops. Hold on, hold on. The, the agitator? Yes. Martin Luther King friend? Yes. Like, get the. Dude, my pops ran without, my pops was embedded in, you should find me any civil rights picture. My pops was there. Yeah. My granddaddy you don't was there. You know like, my father, man. I know what your dad, granddaddy is. He was, he was like, I mean, I'm going all the way back to the 50s, like Zimbabwe Before Civil that, War, yeah. uh, Soweto riots in South Africa. My pops, yeah. at the time, he was still in Chicago. When, uh, when they started fucking over the black soldiers in Vietnam, my pops volunteered to be embedded with black Vietnam soldiers to report on the racism. Like, basically, wherever there's racism, my daddy was like, all right, let me go see what the fuck is going, going on. And then he came back to Chicago during the 60s, during the Civil Rights Movement, and then that's when they started uh, WVON, The Voice of the Negro, which was like basically, basically black Twitter. Look, it's like black CNN. So any black news, any news that was relevant to black people, they were the ones that reported that shit. He hired Don Cornelius. That's Roy Daddy that hired Don Cornelius. Get out of here, man. You remember when they did American Soul? That dude, that was that was Roy Daddy who did that. Yeah. 
And my daddy didn't get no money from Soul Train because he didn't think the idea was good. <clears throat> he was wrong about that. Like he was way wrong about that. My pops fucking Don Cornelius. Don Cornelius was with the stories that was told to me. Don Cornelius was going around Chicago, you know, getting money from folks to shoot the pilot for Soul Train. <clears throat> my daddy gave him, gave him a rack. So about a month or two go by, he can't sell the pilot to Soul Train. Won't nobody fuck with it. My daddy go back to Don Cornelius and go, you know, nigga, nigga where the money at? Don is like, well, rather than me pay you back, let me make you a producer. You could be a part of this shit. My pops told Don Cornelius, don't nobody want to watch niggas dance for an hour. <laughs> that probably was his exact word. Don't nobody, don't, wanna, don't nobody wanna watch niggas dance what? For an hour. For an hour. Yeah. But you gotta remember, this is like 68, 69, and you gotta remember my daddy's pedigree. My daddy's pedigree is just straight woke shit. Like this nigga been my shot at, he been beat. Like the struggle ain't no game. Yeah. Motherfucker, we out here, these motherfuckers trying to kill us. Are you trying to put niggas and do a spelling bee on a goddamn TV show? <laughs> cuss them out, cuss out, Don. That's you going to jail, Roy, you better jail. Where is my money, yeah. Don? Yeah. Then he pulled a little pistol out and said, on his left. He got 46 uh, hours. 46 hours, an uh, off number. <laughs> Two of them already left me getting Come out on. the car. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to fam you, man, because I wanted to get the fuck out of Alabama for a minute, but I wanted to be close where I knew some folks would have my back. Also, at the time, I thought I was going to play baseball. You appreciate this. Fam you's baseball team was trash in the 90s. OK. Mm -hmm. So my stupid ass thought I could walk home. And I thought, and I didn't know this, but at college, everybody's good. Yes. Just because we lost don't mean we suck, nigga. I showed up and was cut immediately. Boy, some team <laughs> gonna pick that up. <laughs> is that, that's that's what you, you said. Just room. cause we lost don't mean we suck. That is, <laughs> man. Yeah. It's like Bro. in the NFL and stuff like that, man. Somebody yeah, gonna have that tape to the dugout. Nah, don't get that to the Jaguars. They are. They do something. <laughs> But yeah, so that's where I ended up, man. Well, your dad, so your dad, but, but your, so when your dad went to Vietnam, he went there just reporting, though. My dad, my dad was in Vietnam. They were shooting everybody the same. Yeah, no, 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 no. My dad was in Vietnam. He was in Vietnam then. He was uh, used to be shell shocked. Lowe's, Lowe's met him. When my dad used to, uh, when I was like eight years old, man, my dad still suffered from it. He used to always say how, how it was over there. You know what I mean? Like when I was eight years old, I used to. Uh, I used to have to sleep with a bulletproof vest on. Stop talking to him, man. <laughs> Just stop talking to him. wake up shooting, though. and sometimes they'll wake up like, yeah, all right, son. I'll be like, yeah, dad. Don't shoot with the four five. You got to shoot with the nine or something. Like, <laughs> See, stop talking. Like, talk. I'll be trying to talk about my life up in here. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show, man. This man right here is full of shit. What did and went to Rwanda? <laughs> he full of shit. I'm, I'm the only motherfucker that can tolerate Damn, him. The, the last people that came out of Vietnam on the yet. helicopter. Ask him. My dad was on the helicopter at the Hilton. Yeah, at the, the Hilton, Hilton Hotel. The Illinois Hilton. Man, I was pumped. Your dad was Not at the Illinois, Illinois. It's the Hilton Hotel. It was some Hilton or something. You see how this shit that went them. from Vietnam to the Hilton Hotel. I'm talking about talking to him. Bro, talk Hilton. to me. I'm trying to give him. I'm trying he to help guess, this nigga man. get out the hole. He's just a guest. Man, look, bro. I'm talk saying, I'm saying, it was a ho the hotel, the famous hotel at the end of Vietnam that they always show. Ain't no famous hotel in the man. I'm saying the famous. Said at the Hanoi Hilton. Is that what the name of it is? Yes, nigga. I said it four times. What? Lowe's up here trying to act like you was up here talking about the 12 in Atlanta or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I know you were talking about the hill. You see how he tried to act like it was a chain hey, man? Like we talking talk about the Hotel 6 in Vietnam. Don't talk to this nigga no more. This nigga is crazy. Oh my God. So I get arrested, I get on probation, I start doing stand-up. What happened? Wait, hold up, where the fuck that come from? I'm still in the jeans. Hold up, last no. week, before he started talking about the fucking Hilton in Vietnam, we was talking about FAMU baseball. You asked me, you asked, I, and I got, I got cut from FAMU baseball. For stealing right. jeans? No, nigga, I could not hit the baseball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, when did he yeah. start stealing jeans? Yo, how you always I had to pass. find a new gift after I learned I couldn't hit a baseball. <laughs> So it's like, did you spiral yeah, into stealing. depression and start stealing? Who got you into it? Cause you ain't just say I'm finna steal. Somebody got you in that shit. Yeah, cause you, I feel like that's not you. Hold on. So did you get like depressed and just start spiraling? Yeah, cause I thought I was going to prison. Water. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. DC. What we doing? I'm reading this paper. What did that paper say? 
November 6th. Oh, November 6th. We're going to be in Greensboro, man, at the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. Yes. In Greensboro, North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina. What day? November 6th. That's right. Ah. <laughs> Hit the website, 85shopshow.com. Okay. I so, spiraling. So, so everything else going good in baseball. You just can't hit this. No, baseball, baseball, okay. baseball trash. Oh. Baseball happened. I go work at Shoney's. For what made you think? What made you even think you was? What made you do that? The baseball shit. Like you was good in your area. You saw Michael Jordan down I was, in Birmingham. I was, no, I wasn't good in my area, but I was like, maybe <laughs> he was gonna get better. Yeah. <laughs> if you just keep trying. He never just. <laughs> I mean, Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson is from Alabama, right? <laughs> you done went down there. baseball? Yeah, Fuck them people time I mean, up. But you talking about Hall of Fame level talent. Yeah, in was, baseball I mean, and I was, football. I was on the bench. You can't compare me. <laughs> but you made the team a little bit? The family? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Like three days of tryouts. No, nigga, this is the other thing. Tryouts was one day they made cuts every 75 minutes, nigga, I was going. Are you serious? 64. <laughs> Damn. Right? It was like 40 people. And it's like, we're gonna keep two of y'all by the end of the day. And we do uncut. If we call every 75 minutes, they call the numbers. And if your number is like Squid Game, your number on the chest, if you, your number get called, you stay. Red light. Yeah. And so that was it. And so I started working, and then you get tired of being broke. And Shonis. So yeah, I'm like, well, Shonis okay, had okay. the dope ass uh, breakfast buffet. Yeah. And then I went over to Golden Corral. Okay. And so. Culinary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cutting there. Upgrade. Yeah. Cooking, you was cooking Upgrade. what you were doing at the job. Cooking and sweeping what you were doing. No, I was My serving, man. I was, I was serving. getting that tip money. Yeah. yeah. Cracking jokes at the table. That's low key <laughs> open mic. Hell yeah. You figure out which joke work at this table, you do it at every table for the rest of the day. By the end of your shift, you got a five minute set. So I used to like fuck around with that. And then when I saw what it was, when Ricky Smiley popped on Comment View, that was like, I was like, oh, that's some shit that I think I could try. Yeah. Because I was the first person from the crib. Because, you know, you know how it is, Alabama. Don't nobody give you no dreams other than marriage See, yeah. and get you a good Go to job. college. Yeah. Get you a good job. <laughs> Buy you a Buick. Or Cutlass Supreme. Yeah. And I, I mean, my daddy was a Stanton yeah. Lincoln man. He wasn't okay. a Buick Y'all grew up with some class, dude. Yeah. Hit Mark a Lincoln. Seven, yeah. Mark seven, eight. Yes, sir. Real smooth. You could turn that bitch like this. <laughs> and Great so, power steering. So I started looking at stand-up comedy. And then at the same time, like I figured out how we could boost shit from Dillard's. So I was doing that for a minute. We got caught. Okay. We? So well, yeah, me and some other folks, but I mean, I ain't gonna- You had a I blue jean still in ring. Nah, it wasn't just blue jeans. It was, if it was in Dillard's, I could figure out a way to get it to you. All right, bet. Well, let's just move on. We don't want to dwell on that. You're yeah. so successful now. So, you know, that's what happened, man. I started doing stand-up, and I would take the bus up to Atlanta, get booted uptown, take the bus back to Tallahassee. Which one of the uptown, though? Marietta or the yeah, one on Peace Tree? No, the one on Peace Tree over in, um, over in Buckhead. Yeah. Right by, I would get, by the Houston, uh, yeah. This is Sunday night, this is like 98, 99, so this is Nard Holston, Earthquake era. Okay, uptown. what's some of the wildest shit you've seen up there? Shit, I'll just say me. The night I bombed, and then the waitress still made me buy two drinks. <laughs> and I told the waitress, I said I was a, I said I was one of the comedians. She said, you wasn't up there funny, baby. Oh my God. That wasn't comedy, baby. You gotta buy two drinks. You sitting in my section. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you going to jail. Yeah. I know she did. So I get booed. Wash, rinse, repeat. I go down to Macon, but then in the South, what I peep is that if you're gonna work every week, it can't just be black rooms. So that's why I started <laughs> kind of crossing over a bit. So you go to Biloxi, do the casinos. You go down to Florida, do all the old folk shit. And by that point, you get down to Miami, do Marvin. Marvin Dixon had the Tuesday night at that point. White people will confuse you though if you're on the come up, because white people will make you feel like you should have made it already. <laughs> Dude, you're the fucking best I've ever seen, man. Yep. <laughs> and I go, listen, <laughs> I go to comedy shows, man. I've seen them all, bro. You fucking got it. And then you walk your ass into Uptown on a fucking- They don't nobody know you! I got blue. Wait, shit. 
<laughs> the craziest shit I heard a nigga say at the comedy show, he told the nigga on stage bombing, he said, nigga, kill yourself and I'll pay for the funeral. Mm. I, don't, I don't know where the fuck, like how dark of a person do you have to be to yell out some shit like that at somebody trying to make you laugh? You know what, you know what was fair, in hindsight, what was fair about Atlanta, like the Atlanta scene, was that... They hate everybody. They hate everybody, and next week, it's a clean slate. Yeah. Yeah, they'll that, give you a they, chance to be good. Yeah, so there was never <clears> like, no residual, oh, that's the nigga from last week I hate. It's yeah. let's see what this week brings. But that's what keep it. That's what keep it constant. And that's you know what fair. I'm Every show is different. You know what I mean? We learned that early. I started out in D.C. I seen this one comedian who used to be around here bomb about seven hundred times in a row. He used to bomb about three times a night, but he would go up at every spot. Same bits. Same bit. Would nobody pull him to the side and go, "Hey, man." It didn't man. matter. It was just like you never said that. Everybody tried, but he just, <clears throat> he never gave up. That's that, that's, that, that's that mechanism that they can't get past, though. That's that. that Even when he didn't bomb, he didn't do good. And he just still, and he just eventually gave up. I don't even know if he gave up. I think he's still out there bombing somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so I just kept going on the road, bro. Like, that was my thing, because I could never... Who was one oh, of the no. first people put you on the road with them? Like, with a name that was selling tickets and shit? I'd say the first nigga really put me on was probably Tommy Davidson and D.L. Hughley. Like, that kind of happened in the same way. D.L. probably did me the biggest solid without even realizing it. When I started in radio, so Ricky Smiley left Birmingham to go to Dallas to start with, you know, everything he got today. And so I took over for Ricky and the comedy club wouldn't let me host on the weekends because that's, you know, that's the big X or whatever. So, that's who they should have had, the radio nigga. Had the, that's so, stupid. That's, no, that is the thing, so that's what happened. So this is how I got on the radio in Birmingham. I go to the radio DJ, shout out to the, you know, my man Buck Wild. And Buck, he goes, well, we're not having any more comedians. Ricky left and no one can be as funny as Ricky. We just that sound, that sound like a white man. <laughs> Wasn't white, he's mixed. It's solid, solid motherfucker. That's the white man in them saying that, though. Okay. So then I know that the radio station hosts, <laughs> hosts a black night. So I go to the comedy club and I go, hey, I just got hired at the radio station. So let me host for D.L. Hughley. The club go, cool. I go back to the radio station. Hey, comedy club just booked me for D.L. Hughley. If I rip, you let me come back and intern. And they go, cool. So then Friday night come, all I got to do is keep radio man away from the comedy club, man. I go up and do three minutes. You know how you just had a one set that you needed that fucking night? Yeah. Kill that shit fucking, yeah. fucking magic, dog. I walk off stage, radio nigga standing right there. He says, see you Monday morning, bring Chick-fil-A. And then I go in the green room and D.L. Hughley is there and he go, you did a good job. Tell you what, open for me the whole weekend. DL ain't had to do that. And you know how like the, so the OGs the travel. They already got a set. The show is set. They got their openers. Right, they and they people. definitely ain't letting nobody else on the show. I don't know what it was, man. But like that vouch gave me the tape to get booked everywhere else in the South. Yeah. See? Nashville, Chattanooga. Real niggas set it do real things. Set it on. Now see, yeah. it's a lot of motherfuckers out there hating this shit. They hate that. They bitch ass. It don't cost you nothing to let a nigga do what a nigga was going to do. That's all it is. I ain't never... <laughs> like, that was probably one of the most solid fucking vouchers. Man, and look me. what you did with it. You got to fucking... You got to deliver, though. That's the thing. You yeah. got to be fucking ready. Like, that's the part of it that I always appreciated, but... That's why, like, even now, man, I try to, like... I try to connect with younger comics, man because they the ones that's got all the sauce. They know what the fuck is going on because they into the street. I'm too busy writing, editing, being a daddy. The young niggas, when they broke and they hustling, they know every which way, which angle, they know which app. So <laughs> put them on, put them on the show with you because now I can put money in your pocket and I get to sit and talk with you for 20, 30 minutes between the show yeah. and figure out what the fuck is going on out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It's like you paying it's like, like low key, I'm not even having an opener. I'm not, I don't care about your jokes. I'm paying for you to give me the game. 
And that's worth paying a little extra for. So, you know, that's what I try to do now because, you know, like what CeeLo said, everybody is somebody because of somebody else. Mm. That's real. That's real right there. <laughs> so, you know, that just never left me, man. Hell yeah. But I feel like as entertainers, man, sometimes you, it's like we kind of owe that to the entertainment game. Because like you said, who's to say that it might, it might be this dude's night to change his life, to hit him with that, that five minute set? Cause somebody watching, somebody might see him. You know what I'm saying? He might just be, he might just yep. be up. He might just be due for some good luck, man. Yeah. He didn't work this shit out. Yeah. But then be the same cast that's going. Help. This is the other thing I learned, dog. Like that's that's the one upside though, to working the road. Growing, like instead of being in L.A. or New York, and it's probably the same. It's for sure the same shit in the A. When you work the South and the Midwest, starting out, you see every week. You see all the different ways your career could go. You Hell open yeah. for every type of comedian. You open for alcoholics, you open yep. for the ones that's hustling. The yep. ones that's on drugs, yes. the ones that be disappearing, the weird ones. The ones the who ones never who... wrote a new joke in five, six years, yeah. and they slowly starting to fall off. The ones who don't do nothing but chase fucking women the whole fucking night. Yeah. Like, and you start seeing, oh, well, if I make that choice, that's gonna happen. If I make this choice. It's like you get, you get a, you see you get a preview piece into all of the different fucking buckets your career yeah. could go into. You can see the younger comedians come in and how they come in and do that too, you know what I mean? Yeah, the cycle. Yeah, so you know, that's, that's, that's my shit, man, is I sit on Instagram and watch everybody. Any stand-up joke, anything, I wanna see what the fuck everybody's doing. I don't wanna I see mean, nothing. I be trying to unplug. I don't even wanna know what they talking about. I love it, I love it. Cause I, <laughs> I'm still a fan of the craft <clears throat> I'm not saying y'all ain't, you know, doing what y'all do, but I just like watching what other folks are doing, man, because I still sometimes just enjoy seeing different perspectives <clears throat> and shit. Oh, you mean like the whole, whole internet craze, like um, videos and everything? Not like, just sketches, know? I'm talking stand-up, too. Like, yeah. I know a lot of comedians don't watch other comedians. Yeah, right? I don't be watching like, a lot of comedians. Straight up, you don't right. put no Not that, like, because no I, don't, cause I hate them or some not shit. I just... It's to create, you want to make sure that your creative My creativity process is don't pure. Run dead. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. So I'm like, well, let me see what they're doing. Cause that, that, that started, cause I didn't book Comic View, so I got mad. You never did Comic View? No, I did, but like, I got turned down the first two years. I never did. You know what's fucked up about Comic View? Every, a lot of shit was fucked up about it. They look Correct. at everybody. But what was really fucked up about Comic View is that they would send you a letter to let you know you weren't selected. You could just tell me. Just don't call me and I will assume did I get, but they would send you a letter. With a letter here. It was in the VHS tape. New Op Inc. New Op Inc. Shout out to Steve Harvey's old company. Yeah. And with yeah. Sean McDonald. Yeah. They, 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 they used they, to work they, for him. Yeah, so they know. It was a blue, it was a, <laughs> it was a blue logo with a little thin N and the, oh, yeah, and the loop and the O yeah. overlapped the N. I, I fucking remember that rejection letter. You were, you were not selected this year for the comment you see. Yeah. Keep trying. It's like an uplifting paragraph at the bottom. <laughs> and then Jesus and then you together. watched it. <laughs> and then you watched it and you was like, man. Man, fuck this shit. No, no. Yeah. Hey, bro, so, I used to show up down to two of the comic views, man. Like You know about that shit? What, showing Being up to the alternate? <clears throat> Being a, that was the, come on, man. Man, when you be the alternate, boy, I mean, you just going down You just there. waiting on something No, 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 because you show up and you get to see all the comedians who ain't never put you over shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody knew about it except you. You were just in the club with everybody there. It's the there. equivalent of flying standby on a flight. Yes. Yeah. But trying to get on TV. Yeah. So you show up to the venue and hope someone else that's booked does not show. Right. You hope he dies in a car crash. Yeah. Nobody had no cell phones like that. We'll and then the producer would just come out. Yeah, we don't, we don't see Zoo Man. Ah! Just, dude, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and just, it literally boiled down to who you knew. And so, like, I went to uh, Comic View Party Girl year. The New Orleans. The New Orleans with Bruce The one Bruce that they had to stop filming. Really. <clears throat> Correct. That's when they stopped me. So, Go ahead. I was in the lobby, and the only nigga that I knew was Akatunde and Spank Brown. Spanky Brown. Spank Brown. R.I.P. to Spank. Hey, and so those, those were my two dudes, but they were barely in themselves. And I peeped game, and I see Spanky trying to like get the producer's attention. He's like, hey, get, get it. I'm like, oh, no, I done drove all the way down here for nothing. <laughs> and you know who played that shit right, though? Ooh. It was fucking Shorty Shorty. Shorty came down there, 
and this nigga went out in the audience line and just started roasting niggas in line. Yeah. Just like you just hear as a fucking alternate, so fuck it. I'm a roast and got on. Killed yeah. people. Murdered. And I'm just like, that ain't that ain't in me. That yeah. ain't what I do. So I just couldn't fucking do comedy <laughs> that year. So I got pissed about it. So I went in that whole season. Is that, I, let me see who went. I came down with Tony Woods, but go ahead. I remember the last one, though. So I sit down, and I just, I watched Comic View for a whole year, and I made a list of every topic that every nigga discussed. Straight, spreadsheet, handwritten. Every night I check sex, ugly people, cripples, baby mamas, poverty joke, poverty joke, <laughs> sex, <laughs> women need to suck dick. The list, <laughs> yeah. Made a list of everything that every nigga, ta- every subject that was broken on the show that year. And the next year, I just, I like, I'll talk about anything but that stuff. And y'all gonna fuck with me, if nothing else, because I'm different. And so that just forced my writing into a place where, even if I ain't the funniest, let me at least start in a place that nobody else is cooking. And then if I can make it funny, now I'm funny and original. Yeah, man, because white comedians can say any fucking thing, and that shit just work. Oh, McDonald had a farm. (laughs) So I'm at a farm, right? The white people go crazy. (laughs) Woo! Dude, did you hear the farm joke? So, uh... Fucking rocks. Oh, McDonald. (laughs) Buy the fucking farm. Can you believe this shit? (laughs) You know know who's underrated (laughs) to me in that shit, where they can just take a sentence and work that shit over and over again is fucking J.B. Smooth. J.B. Oh, man. J.B. Smooth can go on stage, you can give him three sentences, and he will do a 10-minute joke off three, just callbacks and, you ever just seen an orange in the store? Just an orange, just a motherfucking orange. It's a little <laughs> green. I don't trust that little green part of the orange. Why is that shit green? Why did you pick that orange if it wasn't completely orange? Motherfucker, it's green. And he will just, Milk and milk and He milk. has jokes that are just, like you said, that are just sentences. Like, he did what the <laughs> shit he said. Ain't nothing in the world faster than pume. <laughs> pume. <laughs> pume is the fastest shit in the world. Nothing faster than pume. Pume. <laughs> this nigga had the joke about this fucking, uh, the 50 Cent song, that, uh, that song with Tony Ye- Yeo. Okay. What is that shit? So seductive. So seductive. Yeah. But he was acting like, oh, that's the best song ever fucking made. Niggas could drive a stagecoach to that motherfucker. And he would fucking <laughs> a stagecoach. And he would act like he driving the stagecoach to this shit. Yeah. But he like, he had yeah. these big ass boots, man. And this shit yeah. was. I it's, remember so, JB. it's one of the funniest the fucking opening jokes I have ever seen a comedian yeah. do. Cause he was doing this shit for like 10 minutes. I'm reading this paper, DC. What is it, for? It says November the 5th, we're supposed to be in like. North Charleston? Yeah, at the North. Coliseum. Yeah, exactly. And that's in Northern South Carolina. Carolina. You gotta say that, so it's like. Northern Northern <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Northern Northern that's right. I told the to do it. <laughs> Okay, man. <laughs> so that's the type of shit that's gonna be happening November the fifth when we get to Charleston, man. So make sure you get those tickets. Hit the website 85southshow.com. What's the date? <laughs> Return to the ghetto letters, man. Get you some tickets. Why you playing with yourself? No Charleston, South Carolina. Carlos Miller, it's official. Fall is here, and Blue Chew is the perfect thing to make sure she leaves satisfied. You get it? Fall, leaves, satisfied. All right, that's right. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. The best part is all done online. So, you know, no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you approve, you'll receive your prescription within days. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code 85SOUTH at checkout. Just pay the $5 shipping. So if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. That's bluechew.com, promo code 85SOUTH, and you'll receive your first month free. Just visit bluechew.com, 
For more details and important safety information, and we would like to thank Blue Shoe for sponsoring this podcast. I wish I could remember the joke he had about getting pulled over or like a dude behind him, like a police or something like that, you know what I'm saying? He, he was saying the dude was acting like a police behind him, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, making the sound and stuff like that, and somebody was throwing rocks at him, whatever it was. This was at a club like in, in New York, man, you know what I mean? Like. Uh, one of the spots. You feel me? I came up yeah. in the New York bracket. Trying to shit in the Chicago like, bracket. When we did last comic standing watching this nigga try to read them goddamn cue cards. <laughs> Y'all did last comic standing together? Yeah. Same yeah. season? No, he was one of the hosts. Okay. I did uh, 2010. The one thing last comic standing did for me, it made it makes you complete. It was 2010. This was the first year. When the first year. It was like the early days of live tweeting. Play me some pimping on this one, man, because this here it go. This is some right. real pimp shit. If you on if you on the show, your job is to Sell interact yourself. Yeah. with the social media and all of that shit. And every night, every Monday night, you had to get online and interact with all the people who was watching Last Comic Standing. And just in the hashtag. You just see people saying the most terrible shit about you. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was just, before the YouTube. Not for, for the most part. I mean, YouTube was around, but just in terms of just yeah. seeing people go, nigga ain't funny, nigga fuck Martin Luther King, his yeah. ass, nigga. <laughs> and just I, every every fucking Monday for two months, I had to read all this terrible shit. Yeah. And on the other side of it, I was like, oh, this shit don't bother me no more. It was, like, it was like, for like a week or two, that shit will fuck with you. <laughs> and then after that, you're like, oh man, y'all niggas just bored and just need something to hate. The internet. Oh, you ought to read some of the comments <laughs> that be on this show. Oh, I'm sure, it's YouTube. YouTube go hard. Yeah, some motherfuckers wait till 58 minutes in. Do they ever tell you the truth? Do YouTube ever tell the truth too, or not? Nah. No, they the don't. Comments. I think they're, like I wonder about the shit that we don't get to see. How did that shit even get through the filter? <laughs> you know they don't show you all that shit. Oh yeah, they yeah. still. They, Cause they don't want you to really know how good your shit really is. You imagine you click on one of these fucking episodes, this bitch got 85,000 comments. It's two million followers. You mean to tell me we won't give a 300 comments a show? Yeah. <laughs> Man, kiss my dick. Yeah. Somebody lying, yeah, somebody, yeah. bro. <laughs> it's two million. Bro, we got shows that have fucking 20 million views. 119 comments. <laughs> when they see me, you gonna get about 50 million shit. You know, I'm the goddamn the shit out here. Shit. This is weird. <laughs> And the nigga just fuck on my life. I mean, nigga, if you I see what I'm saying? Hey, I don't tell you your name. You hate on me. Name, I don't know why that man hate on me like that. Bro, we gonna put your name in the what? title, and they still gonna be like, who it do? Man, oh my god, help us! <laughs> Did you was at my grandma baby shower? You gonna act like that? <laughs> hey man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Set it off, hold on. Man, I gotta ask you about some of my favorite <laughs> shit, man. I you know, you've put in a lot of great work, man. You got a lot of great stand-up material out there. Are you in the rotation with, you've been in the rotation since Premium Blend. Yeah. Oh, four. Yeah. <laughs> that was well, some of my oh, favorite oh, oh, oh. shit is, I, I consider it a classic in my list of comedy classics. Slap you to sleep, man. Oh, the prank call out. Man. Yeah, the last one I did. Yeah. That was 07. Man, tell me about it. How you put that together? Like, what was it? Put a year on it. It's timeless. It's oh, timeless yeah. comedy. Yeah. So I was doing the prank calls, and Ricky left. Ricky had left um, Birmingham. So Ricky was known for pranks. So when I got hired at 95.7, they was like, well, you got to do pranks. You can do whatever the fuck else you want, but you're going to do, do pranks. Prank. So then what I peeped, I peeped game that. We was doing pranks. This is like 02, 03. This is pre-YouTube. Right. And I'm taking these pranks. We airing them one time, and we ain't doing shit else with them no more. So I go to my boss. I'm like, can I put these online? On the so I, that's when I set up my web page. Set up the web page, put the prank calls on there. This one going, this one you went viral over email. Yeah. That was a time, young people. Tell them. Yeah. A stranger would send you a fucking file and you would download that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like that was, hey, trust me, this file, you didn't call a nigga and go, nigga, is you hacked? It was you just trusted it. Yeah. How long did it take to download? Shit, about 
40 minutes. <laughs> Three minute prank call or some shit. So I started putting the CDs together and they started running me in consignment in the black owned shops mm -hmm. around town. And then a couple of DJs started getting a hold of my shit. So my shit started getting put on Chameleon and I put my shit on a bunch of his mixtapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the pranks start traveling around to other radio stations. And that's how I started getting booked in other comedy clubs and other markets. It's because I would just send them pranks. I would send them just a whole ass fucking floppy disk. Nigga. This is before USB stick drive. <laughs> With the metal slide, that joint, I, was, I would mail that bitch to a radio station and go, my nigga play this shit for me. All you got to do is say my name. I don't want no bread. Bro, I bet you got a cell phone with a little rotary dial on that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and then I let that shit marinate on the radio station in that market for like two months. And I turn around and call the comedy club and go, you got to fuck with me. I'm on the radio. Mm -hmm. yep. That's how I would get booked. And so <laughs> I, do the, I do a CD. And uh, so there was this lady. So Hurricane Katrina happens. And after the comic view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the Cheryl Underwood year. The I remember, film. remember they stopped. They stopped the film, and I was there. And they so, kicked me out of that motherfucker. Hey, so you should have been leaving the city. A fucking hurricane was coming. Man, I know we ain't know, but we ain't know it was gonna be that bad. Uh, none of us knew it was no, gonna be that bad. No, but they, they it wasn't stop TV. It yeah. was like, nigga, we're not making no more TV. Yeah. Everyone leave town. Yeah. And your ass was still waiting. I remember. <laughs> man, 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 I was like, that man. Roy, Roy, don't leave my hand. Don't leave my hand. Too many people looking. Don't leave my hand. They gonna shut the motherfucker down because I'm supposed to be on it. I'm alternate. Third alternate. Nah, they stopped about four shows or five shows. It was like 15 comedians, man. When I had already got stopped from the first comic view. I said, God damn. I'm so, the store. so you remember Katrina hit and people got relocated all over the South. Yeah. So at the time, that shit was some tense shit because there was a lot of cats that were coming from New Orleans in certain parts of the, like, I know it was happening in Houston. It was for sure happening in Birmingham. I'll just speak on Birmingham. Where cats was coming and it was starting to be like, starting to be tense between folks, you know, a little bit of turf yeah. war, a little bit of just, why these folks coming in? Man, that shit job. got valid yeah. as fuck in Atlanta. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't no... I'm trying to be nice about it. Man. But it, was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was tense because you had a lot of different sets mi mixing that normally don't have to mix. Man, man, yeah. when that but, shit it was happened, but I remember I all remember. the violence everywhere went no, up. Now, the violence no. went up, but, but, I remember, but I remember still that everybody was come together. I know the black folks definitely, nigga. You know what I'm saying? When That's why it was violent. When bitch. you put black people together, it's gonna be some violence. Now, I'm talking about before when we saw everybody down there like that. You know what I'm saying? We saw that it was the black people that was Well, just but we talking like about that. when they left and I'm they was saying, violent. I'm not saying it wasn't love. There was definitely love in the mix of all of yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. blankets and toys and shelter and, and all of that shit. Water and shit. Money. But yeah, it was yeah. also niggas that was like, yo, I'm here to get money. And the locals was like, no, you are not. They was like, by any fucking means. And that yeah. shit was, it, so, it was tense. So I called a lady, told her we was gonna cut her social security check to give money to Hurricane Katrina victims. She went the fuck she off. Went the fuck off. Barbara, Barbara's check is the name of the call. And so I put that online, just random day, put it on my website. Two hours later, my website crashed. Webmaster called me. Hey man, we gotta add some bandwidth to the website, this shit going up. I go, okay, add a couple more, Gigabyte, chilla, jillabyte, whatever the fuck it is, crash again. My website crashed like three days in a row. We just keep upping the server space and all of that shit. And so that Somebody was the call. Somebody doing this or this the number? No, doing? folks was flooding my website to download the call. And at this point, YouTube, I put it on YouTube, but on YouTube, you just listen to shit. Right. YouTube wasn't even a visual website yet. So. I took that call and started doing more and more and putting it with other calls and then put that album together and that was the one that did like the best for me to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, with the pranks, you know, that was an error, man. What I figured out though, as I got older, once I got into my thirties, I couldn't keep doing them because, you know, prank calls, that's a young man's game. To me, at least. Technology changed, you can't even fucking do it no more. It's too hard. Right. Nobody, like, you prank call somebody in 03, the way I used to block my numbers with an AT AT and T calling card, and so it'd come up and say AT and T on it. Yeah, it's just ID. say it's, it'd be a seven two zero Denver number. Oh yeah, they go after that. Yeah, curiosity. Yep. It, Who called me from doing? Prank calls used to be rooted <laughs> in the curiosity of the unknown. Now you don't even want to fucking know who calling you. Right. I, even if it's your family, you send them the voicemail. So, 
you can't even really do that shit no more. Right. Also, I, as the pranks grew, I had to start prank calling people out of town. And the thing with Birmingham, and this is what Ricky set up, Ricky Smiley set up an atmosphere where if, if I prank call you, it's love. And you know me, you know the station, I'm in the community. You know I don't mean you no harm. Yeah. When the pranks grew, too many niggas in Birmingham knew my voice, so we started calling out of towners. Out of towner don't know me. They don't give a fuck about me. Right. They don't give a fuck if it's love. And a motherfucker ran up on me in Cleveland at a show. And that's when I was like, all right, this ain't. Oh, personally, he came yeah. up to me like, they do all that prank yeah. call shit, like, hey, motherfucker, let me tell you. Yeah. I ain't, I'm not finna fight you, sir. <laughs> um, not over a prank from three months ago. <laughs> it wasn't like but I'm saying just my pranked hood him. Don't be... I called him from Birmingham. He was in Cleveland. We did the prank. Ha ha ha. Yeah, hang up. Yeah. Three months later, I'm at the Cleveland Improv down in the flats, <laughs> and that motherfucker waited patiently for me. <laughs> patiently at the merch table, just. <laughs> and you know how you figure this nigga want to say some. Yeah, how you doing, like normally when a, when, a, when a black man standing like this beside the table. At the end of you do all your meet and greet, he wanna come up. I just wanna tell you, it's some positive grip yeah. to pull you in. Yeah, shit. yeah. <laughs> what do you think? One of them, hey, brother, do your thing. I'm here, that. nigga. What is that? He pulled me in, he go, I just want you to know if I wanted to touch you, I can't. I could touch you. And push me off like that. <laughs> wow! Like the point, he got to say, you know, he yeah. got to say, he slapped you and all that. He gonna say that. But so at that I, point, I was like, all right, man. All right, yeah. You don't hate me. No. Yeah. So like, get at it. Yeah, I feel you, bro. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I mean, and that's wild for me, cause you know, for the most part, black folks fuck with me. Yeah. I ain't never want to fucking be. With yeah. Me. Black black people might want to like. Yeah, you got I think. I think it's a 97 percent rule with black people. Like that's the most you can get. You ain't gonna never get a lot. You mean? It never be a hundred. Oh, of course not. No. 97 is the most. And but that's saying, like a circle. But I'm saying, even if you didn't think I was funny, you wouldn't want to fight me. Right. So I ain't ever seen nobody want to just fucking beat my ass. Like, you might be disappointed. Mm. He probably wanted to do something bad to you at first oh, that he yeah. saw the show and he was like, man, I was gonna kill your ass. I you just fuck with you. you funny. Sometimes, people, people sometimes niggas that. just be upset and you just look you. like the shit they upset about. But some cats, but you can't play with people You never like know that, what somebody uh, going through, too. I said, I, nephew Tommy, uh, I seen him, I was just, we came back from doing the show. We were somewhere doing the show, and he had, um, did a prank call or something like that, and it was just um, talking about a dude getting a kidney or something like that, you know what I mean? And he's like, well, you got your kidney, but I want to get your gallbladder, you know what I'm saying? Let me get the gallbladder yeah. so they get your kidney, but the man got real for real, and I'm listening to it, and I know the difference, we both know the difference between comedy, nigga, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, God damn, this shit can't get real, so. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy is cold-blooded with that shit, and also it's a muscle. You don't keep working that shit. That's, it's really, it's improv. Right. It's fucking improv. You can only script the first 30 seconds of the call, like that was like the time um, when Jay Prince, you know the Jay Prince story? Uh-uh. The Jay Prince story. So I prank called Jay Prince. Lord. Damn, man, what the? Take me off this show. What the fuck going down here, baby? Shout out to Jay Prince. He Shout came out to the Shout out to Junior! Swear to God. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. You know it. Hold on. No, it's just, it's, it's we go I'm to still alive, nigga. Okay. So it had a happy ending. All right, man. I'm, I'm like, still here in the world. Like okay. You ain't gonna no. fuck with Jay, go ahead. So when them Chameleon Air pranks jumped off, um, there was a record label in Houston, and they called me up and they go, we, we hear your stuff all over the city and we wanna do a prank call, a celebrity prank call album where we prank call celebrities. I'm like, all right, that's a bet. And so I fly to Houston and they got the list set up of the celebrities. That they, and it's all Texas-based people. Like, it's like Vince Young, it's fucking Scarface, Jay Prince. Like, like, it's like just random folks, all from Texas. And they go, who you wanna call first? I say, let's call Jay, because that's gonna be the hardest prank. So we may as well do that one off the rip. Off the rip. Because the thing about it is that when you're doing a prank phone call, you can't, like, you lose like your energy, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta like, the one that's gonna be the most mentally challenging. Cause Jay Prince is a hard motherfucker to prank. Cause when you think about a prank, if you're just talking just joke structure, right? Right. It's something silly to get you mad or I make an impossible request. Jay Prince is fucking low key, even kill ass nigga. So 
I can't just call him and go, motherfucker, I'm gonna fight you. Like, yeah. that ain't enough. You gotta strike people on the things that they hold dear and that are important to them. If I'm gonna make you upset, that's why, that's why <clears throat> niggas fight over your mama jokes. Right. Because that's something <clears throat> important to you. If a nigga talk about your outfit, if you talk about your girl, if you talk about your children, yeah. there is a set list, especially with black folks. Yes. But nigga, we have to fight right now. Right. right. I'm gonna see your, or I'm gonna we see your ass, at, or I'm gonna see your ass at clean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming clean. I so, know. so when you think about Jay Prince, Jay Prince runs a record label. Yes. What does the CEO of a record label hold near and dear? His artists. Those are his children. So I called Jay Prince. I called Jay Prince and I told him. So wait, hold up, before you even say that, at no point you didn't think none of this was a bad idea. Yeah, okay, backstory. And this is my fault for trusting white people. What the so, fuck? Fuck on with you. Why, man, you, why, why would you do some shit like that? I, I told that? you, man. Hang on. Take me off. Why would you do some shit like that? <laughs> because they ran the fucking record label. But I understand that. He ran the record label. He goes, hey, man, we're going to. You want a prank called Jay Prince? We know him. And I go, are you sure this is all right? Oh, yeah. Jay's also, a good friend. So I go, fuck it. Rack it up. Again. Big, big, win big. Nigga, don't stare at me like that. I'm, this I'm, is a okay, fucking prank call on, CD. Are you right? You right. Do you want the fucking go platinum or not, niggas? Do you want the fucking platinum chain? Shit! So you gotta call somebody that, like... Let me see you like, so you gonna, like. So, so you gonna do this regardless? You gotta go platinum. I, I got flew it. flew to fucking Houston. I didn't sign the, the... It's a fucking contract. I've signed a fucking contract. You, you don't want my life. So life. it's a fucking... I got a record deal. So I got a fucking... The motherfuckers say call Jay Prince. Fuck it. Let's call Jay Prince. Come on, Jay. Come on. I'm so scared of this story, but go ahead, Roy. So I called Jay, and I say, hey, man, I run a record label. I mean, I run a record store in town, and none of these Rap-A-Lot artists is selling. They terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. I ain't sold a single Rap-A-Lot record in two years. Come to my record store and pick up all this garbage-ass music oh my God. that you done dropped off. Jay Prince don't say a word. And you know, a prank. You know, you be we waiting, need that on, back and forth you, yeah, you waiting on the back and forth. He don't give me nothing. Jay Prince go, where you at? I go, what? Where you at? Did Jay Prince. Don't worry about where I'm at, motherfucker. Come on, just come on. Now you getting bucked now. I'm getting bucked with him. Because I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to loud talk them. Right. At that point, I have no, again, the 30 seconds is up. Now we're improv land. So now I'm just loud talking them. You need to explain yourself. Explain to me why you charge me all this money. What is all this? <laughs> <laughs> Where you at? That's all he kept saying. Slowly. Engineers started panicking in the room with me. So that's when I knew some shit was wrong. Because they didn't anticipate Jay acting like that. Another dude that was there, another dude from the, from the record label, he come in the studio with me. Hey, Jay, uh, we were just playing around. It's us at the label. We're, we're at the L L LBD music and uh, it's, uh, just us. Uh, sorry, Jay. And then Jay Prince go. Uh, Jay, he's staying oh, with his question now. Okay. You over there, LBD music. I know exactly where you at. Uh, oh! Hey, man, turn the car around. And then he hung up the phone. And so everybody in the studio shaking. So I turned back to the same white You're dude. You're live, bro? No, no, we're just in the studio. We're just recording a prank album. It's just a studio session. Okay. I turned back to the white dude. I go, am I safe? <laughs> no. You ain't in the same, you in the same city? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we figure. Uh, he's a friend. <laughs> we'll call him again. Call him back, he don't answer. Call him back, he don't answer. And so then I got in the fucking car. It's back in the day, you had to call a taxi, nigga. I called a taxi and waited patiently for a fucking Houston yellow cab to come pick me up. And I went back to the airport. From the studio. I was in Houston a total of four hours. I landed, prank called Jay Prince, went back to the airport. So fast forward. 
These white people had to pay you for this shit. So fast forward like 10, 15 years later, when Jay was on his book tour, he did Sway in the Morning and he asked Sway, he asked Sway, Sway asked him about the story. He said, did this dude prank you? And was you really headed over there to the studio? And Jay just smiled and just said, I was just gonna go over there and laugh with him. Jay, we so, <laughs> we so sad. But shit like that, that's why like, I gotta quit doing prank calls. Did you I mean, squad? you did yeah. pick. Yeah, we made... no, it was great. Yeah, we laugh about it now. But at the time, I made the right call. You did? And fucking leaving the city. Oh, you left the home. I left, nigga, I left the city. It's fucking Jay Prince, and he said he's coming over to where you at. No, bitch, I'm gone. I, you. I, I bought the same day ticket, nigga, at the I mean, counter. I don't. <laughs> Do you know how much that costs? <laughs> Not online, at the counter. I walked into the counter. One, one ticket no. to Birmingham, please. <laughs> You, some shit you don't fucking play with. You should have known that that was a bad idea. He said, I knew exactly where you that's, were. That's a bit big, win big proposition. See, that's why I can't. If that prank joke goes off, then I'm the dude that prank called Jay Prince. If it went wrong. Shit. Stop I'm talking that, about it, because he might I'm still that, be that, mad. I'm that dumb. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I ain't had nothing to do with it. I didn't Any tell him to tell that story. I, you know, I fuck with Jake. Nah, I mean, it's, <laughs> we good now. I met him, man. We laughed about it. So well, you said the same love, thing that your ass went to Cleveland and the motherfucker got done with the <laughs> seven shirts. Bro, you be taking shit too far, man. Nah. You be taking I mean, shit too far. Why not push the envelope, man? Push that motherfucker. Yeah, so that was it, man. What that was the TBS shit. show? Oh, that was Sullivan and Son. Sullivan and Son? Yeah, that? yeah, the bar show. On TBS. We ran that for three years. Shout out to the homie Steve Byrne, man. Steve Byrne, he really understated in terms of just what he does for other comedians. Because he put, at the time, we was a sitcom with like five or six stand-up comedians mm -hmm. on the show, like in real time. Like yeah, I gotta give me some cool-ass white comedian friends who make movies and shit. That's the ticket. Yeah. I gotta get me some. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> I got this joint for Fox. If that bitch go. Man, pitch some shows while you on here, bro. I'm not finna pitch this shit to these niggas. Not to these niggas, but pitch, pitch some other shit to these niggas, man. Don't act like you ain't got shit for the streets, too. You got a pitch to the streets, too, Roy. Oh, show that probably wouldn't come out. Oh, you know, come what, out. you know what I am gonna do? You what? know what I am gonna come back and do? And I'm gonna do it with y'all, because it'll be done right. That's the real. I want to do... Not want, I'm going to, because you do speak it. positive Come on, affirmation. Man. Roy came man. through with the job. Everybody get your shit. Bam, come in here. Listen to what Roy about to do with us. Roy, am I in? All right, we'll, 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 we'll write you in. Yeah. We'll write you in. We'll write you in. You can be an alternate. You got to come and see Yeah. Give him that spot. Sit right here, everybody. Nah, I want to do, <laughs> I want to do a parody. I'm going to do a parody of Vlad TV. Okay. Oh, do a parody. Ooh, where he interviewing people from the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna fuck around and hear you saying that and really have some people on there. <laughs> Welcome back, Glad TV. Miss <laughs> Vera Wright, she is 89 years old. Yeah. Yeah. That would be dope, man, because I had said on here one time, I wonder who did the after parties for like the civil rights and shit. Because you know somebody had a little fish you know, pot. I, I got a good question about civil rights. If you was a civil rights groupie, when did you spit game? Because, like, Dr. King had, you know, what he had, right? And that's what everybody say. Right. When do you pull your chicks, before or after the march? You really kind of do it like, you meet them at the church and you let them know that you're going to be at the march. You know how you, they used to like kind of like barnstorm and hit all the churches, be like, yeah. all right now, Saturday morning, we're gonna be ready. So they would go like all the choir practices and. You want a plate? Come on over for a plate, Mr. Abernathy. That is, yeah. Nah. So you kind of had to work the, the, the church think, circuit first. I think I think it was after the march. I think it was after the march, you gotta get everyone that good and Oh tired. shit, hold up, we got gang violence in this <laughs> motherfucker. Come on, Roy, what's up, nigga?
man. You know, going on, boy. She ain't coming here with the usual. You, man. Respect to you. <laughs> you see the type of shit we on, man? Look, man, I love it, man. I told you we had to get you in the trap, man. Bro, I want to ask you about some of the Comedy Central shit, too, man. And how did, how did you land over there? And you've been, you know, keeping that relationship open and strong for a little bit. That was, um, I got to give it up to two folks, like Trevor Noah and Neil Brennan. Trevor Noah and Neil Brennan. Shout out to both of them, man. Shout out to Trevor, man. Shout out to Trevor. One so, clap. Give him some clap, man. Give him some clap. What's dope, what's dope about Trevor, man, is that when I started at The Daily Show, he told me off the rip. He said, I don't want you to stop none of that political shit, none of that opinionated race shit that you do. First story I did, we did a ride along with a police department in Wisconsin. Second story, this is why I knew it was gonna be a good run, because he let me talk about black shit but approach it from my own take, and there ain't nobody else influencing what we pitch, right? Right. 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. I go to Trevor and I go, let me go down there. Go, All right, cool. To the march. And that's a spot where you wouldn't figure it's some jokes, or you figure it ain't no, no commentary on what's going on. But what it was at the time, so Million Man March 20th anniversary, the motto was justice or else. So they kept saying justice or else. So we just went to DC, I asked white folks, what you think or else mean? You already know what they said. And then you go to black folks and go, what does or else mean? And it's all the positive, empowering, we gonna keep fighting, whatever. But everybody on the white side thought that or else meant riot, kill, murder, burn right. this bitch down. So we was just trying to show how folks don't even know what type of shit black people are. Mm -mm. Trevor let me just straight take cameras it's down there to show that. And we, and we cracked a couple jokes. But at the end of the day, we was trying to show something that was fucking real. Yeah. And he let me do that shit. And like, he's been, he been letting me do that shit since 2016, man. Yeah. So, now we know white people, but Trevor always been going for I'm it. letting white people know, they don't want to see or else. No, what they if, don't really want to see the real They don't want the real or else. They don't want the or else. Because <laughs> what if we just said, you know what? Fuck it, they right, and we just took over all their shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, you talking about our shit? They shit. Oh, our shit. I'm just saying, if we just said, you know what? So you know they shit is our shit. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The shit that they like, we gonna like that shit way more they than they so. ever liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they you know, Except for Elvis, because Elvis was James Brown. I'm saying, yeah. the shit Chuck that Bear. they, like you said, the shit that they love the most. Pull, pull the video up now. Pull the video with Jane Brown doing this shit, yeah. and Elvis came out and did the same. No, what, yeah. what, what, what the Chuck Beatles? Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry did Everybody. that shit. Everybody. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. So, so I started doing yeah. Daily Show. At the same time, man, I've been able to just be blessed and get a couple sitcoms sold. You out of your business. You know, yeah. All right. Kind of, that's where that Steve Byrne and that Sullivan and Son shit came through, because I had a um, I had a sitcom, it didn't go, but I had a sitcom we shot over in Birmingham mm -hmm. where I played a probation officer, and the first thing I tried to yeah. do in that bitch was put other comedians in that shit. Mm -hmm. Man, let's do, that shit. Now, let's, let's do that shit. Let's do it again. We can do that shit. We can do that shit. I'm with it. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it? Y'all heard that shit now. Roy, what we doing, Roy? We're gonna write him in. 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 Gonna write him in. I, 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 you know me, I, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna let my boy Creek do his thing. Well, we're gonna write him in. Go ahead, man. You in it. You in it. You in it. You in it. You mean? You in it. Just like you right here, you are in it. You know my grandma cracked it again. You already in it, man. You know you can pull up on the set, we'll put you in there, man. Let me tell you something, man. Like, I don't get in there, Chris. Man, these folks, these folks that Chris gonna come, he gonna come with the jail suit on. I, I'm ready. Tell him, fly. Yeah, it's just you start realizing, oh shit, you get these, you get these opportunities, man. You start, you gotta throw a oop to other folks, get other folks in the game. So that's what I'm trying to do too, folks. It's been a blessing, man. Man, you've been killing that shit, man. Everybody, somebody, because of somebody else. Hey, yeah. man, you be saying some real shit. Like your jokes, they really stick around. Like somebody got to cook these chicken nuggets, man. Man, let me ask y'all a question. I got a cousin that's a state trooper in Mississippi. Damn. Damn. Yeah, it's okay. In he the don't... blue and orange car? <laughs> nah, he's he the old that... school to do the brown. Oh, he ain't got shit. That's all, so that's about to say. He run errands in the police car in his regular clothes. <laughs> Is that good for the community or bad for the community? That's good for the community. Because the he, he need to be, yeah. they need to be familiar with him 
Right. Even outside, he Right, so when he pulls somebody over, they be like, man, I just saw you at Kroger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Mississippi, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's yeah, a small yeah, state. It's one of them cities where you can park the police car in the front yard yeah. and don't nobody, you know I got the one. I, I got one. I got a cousin. He's he an undercover police officer. Everybody know who he is. He still come out trying to get their arrest motherfuckers. Niggas ain't <laughs> scared. Hey, <laughs> that nigga, that crazy. They good, chill out, goddammit. <laughs> don't blow my cover. Like, bitch, we at the family union. If you don't get that goddamn potato salad out the squad car. Ain't it weird yeah. when people reveal to you that they a police officer? It seemed like they wait yeah. until they've seen you do all the shit that you would have been arrested for before they be like, you know I'm a cop. God to bless that peanut butter. You ever, you ever meet some at the, after the shows or whatever? Yeah, you can always tell who they are. Cause see, y'all, I can tell that y'all get like, I imagine the cops that fuck with 85 South is like task force niggas, like nigga niggas. Man, I've been on TikTok and I've seen police sitting in the car listening to this shit in the background. <laughs> Nigga, I smoke in the police car. Stop saying you know, shit like that. Man, man, don't, man, don't tell this story, man. man. Smoke you smoked in the police the car? The crime is done. Right. <laughs> you said you smoked in the... Nigga. All right. Nigga. I drove one. The with... nigga was hitting the light. Come on with it. Everything, and I'm just... Hitting the weed. Stop playing, man. I swear on everything, but he was like, I was like, hell no. That's good police. <laughs> now see, that's the type of shit that make you feel famous. I said, this shit lit. That's the shit that'll make you feel famous. <laughs> White boy famous. Man. He was a nigga cop, too. Don't say that, bro. That nigga already on thin ice with that police department. Ain't nobody gonna do no investigation, man. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. You turn, in your, body camera, turn in your body camera, we believe. And we know that y'all cut y'all body cameras off. No good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time you hit that bitch, I was like, hell nah. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. I don't tell him I smoked the one with me and Bank Roll Fresh, goddamn. Rest in peace, Bank Roll Fresh. Man, the police oh, probably get together on their off days and watch all that body cam footage and laugh like a motherfucker. <laughs> That's, That's why they have to delete they so for, much of it. For, for that instead of the other shit they need to. Though. I go with my cousin in the police car sometimes to Dollar Tree. Damn. But I don't like it. What the hell? Why? Uh, Cuz, I don't like, because you got to ride in the front seat. And with I don't the, with the computer? Because really? yeah. then you look like a snitch. Do that computer really work? Yeah. Do that computer really work? Yeah. All that shit work. I tripped out. Uh, can I make a confession? Okay. My first car was a police car. For some reason, oh, that's oh, fitting. That's, that's fitting. Car. That's some real hood nigga shit. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm talking about like. Or Crown Vic. The niggas were getting locked up in this bitch before I got it. Right. No. Every time I would ride, niggas would just take off, haul ass. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know. I'm like, nigga, ain't me. Nigga, I'm about ride. The Crown Vic had the big light on it, too. Yeah, nigga, what? Light, yeah, I still had the little light on the side. It ain't work, though. I just hold my arm out on them. Pol <laughs> them old police cars are police favorite cars to pull over. Them shits is Because they already know it's all type of bullshit in there. Oh, because right. if you buying an old box Chevy. They already know the type of life yeah. you live in. Like, if you buy a Crown Vic from a police auction and you just leave that bitch white where the stickers used to be, where it be dirty, you and you leave the light on you it. You still see the pole. It's like, yeah. it's white. It be like, Pum. And you can always tell, like, the difference, like a police Crown Vic, because they got bucket seats and, like, that, that throw up, poop, like, the floor that you can't vomit on. Mmm. Yeah. That hard, that mat flow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the hard shit, man. Real bread, right? Niggas love them cars for some reason, though. <laughs> Especially it's in Alabama. It's a V12, dog. Nobody in Alabama. No, like, no state rides more Crown Vicks than Alabama. At one, yeah. Even the longest. Alabama is a Crown Vic ass state. Right? They love them. I don't give a fuck. What you, a Crown Vic or a Mercury? If they can't crown a Crown Vic, they get a Mercury. Caprice Classics, the old, I'm going early 90s, so box Chevy shape shit. You know, I know. Nigga don't know them flow masters on them goddamn them Crown Vic. When you ride, that motherfucker lift up. You don't feel nothing. Boy, just yeah. getting the police car with the supercharged engine in it was good. Then my cousin got one of those. You know I fucked you... around and bought a police car. I bought a car from a nigga who was on the run and didn't know it. <laughs> Damn. I wonder why he was selling that shit so cheap. He was like, man, give me, give me, give me some hundred. I was like, nigga, <laughs> give me this motherfucker now. Nigga, I swear <laughs> I rode that bit about two months. Police pulled me over. He was like, Demarcus. I was like, nigga, my name John. The fuck? You ain't never switched the paperwork or nothing? Did you know you could See, buy... See, the title was long. Did you know you could buy an old five truck? <laughs> you riding hot already. Bitch, I was riding. Yes, that me. No. That, was a, that was a two month run car. They never the Lord. Yeah, you fucked up. Oh, you, can, you can buy an old five truck for like $800. What? Where? Birmingham. 
I'm gonna start the shopping in Birmingham. Truck. You buy old fire trucks, like after like a certain mileage, they just put it out there. I'm gonna have to start paying yeah. attention yeah. to the shit y'all got going on in Birmingham, man. It's always an auction. auction. You can get like a whatever. Don't ever come through here and buy this old truck. Yeah, cause you know I fuck with the cars. Once it's got like I don't want eight thousand miles or some shit. But I fuck yeah. with the cars. I'm gonna start buying. I get buying an ambulance. Like, I'm gonna get an ambulance and be a Lyft driver and get people to work with. Ooh, that's the next G wagon. Why not just get an ambulance and be an ambulance driver? This shit and I'm about to start doing. Take niggas to the hospital for cheap. Just I'm about to start driving. buying movies. I can't, you I can't. About, you sick? Oh, I thought you were talking about That's safety. your hustle. Movie what? cars. 85 South Ambulance Service. <laughs> Don't trust me. No, because it's cheaper to get an Uber than it is to get an ambulance. No, but y'all got the Uber? bed and shit, though. You, Uber? It's like Am Uber, Uber black, but for ambulance. Mm. You can't trust it, though, because I don't, uh -uh. a nigga don't know if you're going to live or die. Yeah, that's too much. Too that's much too liability. Much for, for us to decide whether you gonna live or die, that's too much pressure. Too much liability. That's not, a nigga like call the ambulance. He like, nigga, I am the ambulance. Like, <laughs> no, but first thing. I think you, you need to stay here. We gonna get somebody else. <laughs> yeah, we won't first be able to extra, render no first aid. First aid extra, you just gotta get them. You man. talking about like just for twisted ankles and broken arms and Whatever shit. Whatever they call you for, you don't get to decide. Yeah, but like Damn. I'm talking about the car shit. I'm about to start getting some moving cars. That's what I'm looking for. Some moving cars. Some motherfuckers yeah. been calling me about cars, and I've been sending them right to you too. I need somebody with like 80 cars. I said I know somebody who got it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and they, I smelled everything. I said call me on three-way. They called yeah. me. They were like Carlos Miller, you got cars? He said I have a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> what cars are you looking to purchase? <laughs> <laughs> are you looking to sell? <laughs> now I bought a Regal from Manny Fresh. That shit hard. Now, if I was yeah. going to put that bitch up and don't touch it, and don't. You bought Why a not? fresh? I'm going to dry the fuck out of that. Regal. Guess what I'm playing? Cut that bitch. Call over the Regal. Get man. your roll on. Yeah. Everybody get yeah. your muck. Every time I get in that bitch, I'm playing yeah, that. What about the one from that song? It's like, cut this Monte Carlos and Regals. Yeah, I got the Regal. I got the Regal from that. I'm getting my What you want? Bro, you don't want to spend no money, man. You be bullshitting. At least you know, and then you I see sit you. There. At least I'm a tight ass nigga, man. Oh, man. You don't want all that shit. Man, you got to pay to play in the car nigga, game. I said, man. love me, how much you want for that? He said, man, he started laughing. He was like, mm. no, I know you, man, because you. You don't really want to know how much. Hell no, man. I'm like, man, send me them, send me them motherfuckers. DC, the type right? of nigga, no. ask you. How much you want for the motherfucker? Give you one sixth of the money and walk off like he put you in the game. Dude. <laughs> right. Right. I'd give you 30%. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, you are nowhere close to my asking price. <laughs> Thanks to my mama, I know how to bargain. Nigga, yeah. well. I don't know who the two fuck you been dealing with. So, what you spend money on? Like, I'm using two for 89, like, procedures on calls. Okay. No. Too many to that. If I can get this one, I know it's another one I can get. But check this out. This, this, way. It's this one thing about cars. Give me some else. I ain't for the about to get them cars. This one, it's the most, break, give this me the dirt bike. This is the most important shit about cars. Fun. You get what you pay for. Definitely do. You, you're not going to get over on no fucking car. I bought a 96 Let me tell you that didn't run, and I thought I was going to rebuild it. Nope. No. And when it came and sat in my, my yard, I said, why in the fuck did I buy this? Look. Broke it down, piece of bullshit. And you thought you was for real? And I thought I was going to fix it. No. Just I'm selling this shit. 90 trips to AutoZone. Listen. Everything has to be rebuilt and touched. You have to be patient I'm to do that shit. shit. Let me tell you. you know I done seen, I done seen, I done seen Lil' says, this just, this just one particular story here. I done seen this motherfucker. It's, it's, it ain't the car sometimes. Sometimes it's about how you get the car. Am I right or wrong? Right. Sometimes. It's you story. know what I'm saying? Now, you're going to turn the car into whatever you want to turn it to. It don't matter. But sometimes it's about how you get the car and who the car belong to first sometimes. Am I right or wrong? Yep. Sounds like you stole the car, bro. Nigga, yeah. this ain't about me. With the fly, I know you ain't talking to him. It ain't about how. Boy, what the car is, it's about how you get it. I know it. you ain't talking to him. You know, you know one thing about it. You got a box truck. I, 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 pull it up. Fly with it. This nigga was locked up when I was oh, locked you got to up. Pull it out and say you want it. All right, that's how we do it. I'm going to go grab that motherfucker. Nigga, the bitch in jail. The bitch in jail. Give me a spark plug. Well, you know you the bitch in jail every goddamn You know I know I'm mad because you ain't called. I'm just saying, look. I just told you to go steal some shit. Look, look, there's one story. Look, there's one story. The lady is an old lady who had the car, you know what I'm saying? And it belonged to her husband. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it's one of the one of the grand one of the grand nationals or something like that. And I think it belonged Only to her son or something owner. like that. Yeah, one owner. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? She by herself, owner. you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I'm saying? She was like, uh, baby, my, my husband passed away from me and I and I and I never I tell you, I said I never would sell it. You know what I mean? All of us feeling sad as hell. No, he ain't passing the car, he just passed away, but that was all she had to remember him, you know what I'm saying? And Lowe's just being compassionate like that, man, you know what I mean? He was just like, 
Ma'am, if you feel like that, it don't even matter. Bitch, how much you want for the car? I'm like, God damn, Carlo. What you want, LeGrand? I mean, I ain't even want to tell that story. You know what I'm saying? But the nigga been talking about me, I damn, you know. Mm. But go ahead, y'all talk to it. You buy them rebuilds? Mm hmm. That's the best way to buy them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to this nigga, man. Don't talk to this nigga, man. I love this nigga. You know, fly, you know, look, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all all about this. Let me tell you something. I remember Fly Love. I remember Fly. I was at the first show. I was at DC Young Fly first show when he rocked it up time. Am I lying or It's on the pictures right now. Y'all go to the Instagram. Check my Instagram. Did OG rock with him for a long time? You know who really know they call? Who? Any nigga that fix it in the AutoZone parking lot. That me. That's, yeah. I love them folks right there. If a nigga just fix his car right next to a Little Caesars in front of everybody, that car is important. <laughs> that dude who always can tell you what type of... What no, because I need help. What type of rent you need? Mm. Give me like, a 716. Right here. Mm. Or 716. Or Give me a 313. Give me a 58. <laughs> as soon as you get to it, they tell you what it is. There ain't no goddamn 58. Hey, man. DC, man, I saw you. My fucking battery died last week. When I left here, I was at the gas station and my battery died. I got, I was in the Cadillac in the, in the old school. I nigga, the car battery. I said, fuck, man, my fucking battery died. I got to jump this bitch off. This nigga pulled up in a Suburban and said, no, the fuck you ain't. Mm -hmm. Jumped out, boost my shit off. <laughs> <laughs> nigga was not. I was like, man, I get, he like, hell no, no, I ain't let you do that, man. Hell no, I pulled you too hard, man. Good people, man. Shout out to my boy, man. Uh, I'm going to pull it up. Shout out to that nigga Mike, man. Mike that nigga show. That nigga say, man, so my battery was dead, and I'm like, you know, I'm popping the hood, and I'm like, shit, I ain't got no jumping cable. I got to find you like, oh, no. So I'm like, the damn. Here, man. Yeah, that nigga was like, hell no, Lo I got you. Don't tell me. in the city. In the city. Now, I remember, now, I remember one it's time. It's like that nigga killed the battery and, and jumped out too fast. I Sometimes ain't... people be bad luck. It ain't even the car. Sometimes it's the people that be bad luck. No, man, because I'm going to yeah. tell you right now, man. That you nigga looked up. You got too many goddamn cars and not have no portable uh, the jump battery table. jump. I do. Yeah. But then you mean, I'm supposed to buy how many of them motherfuckers? And keep <laughs> them in the car? Yeah, me. Six I got six old school, you six portables. Go, and when yeah. I'm in the old school, I usually have it. It just yeah. so happened that. You I didn't in there. Well, you well, got too confident in your Look, look, look. Damn all that. Nigga, you we thought the car gonna make it. He look, had the we from, we had, when we had that, still a goddamn <laughs> We had, had an accident. <laughs> we did a show we had an accident. You know what I'm saying? You had an accident. <laughs> okay, I had an accident. <laughs> I you know what I'm talking about? Let's keep it real. Let's talk about the Let's talk about the event, right? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We went to Cincinnati. Right? It's on the ground. It's on the ground. Check First out the man. Talk about it. So no, we were leaving Kentucky. You a goddamn lie. We were leaving Cincinnati. We rolled through Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? And I know this already. Let me tell you what. First of all, I'm driving to the show. I'm driving my baby mama car. So you wrecked I'm driving my wife car Bet. to the motherfucking show, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Bet. To the show. You wrecked it. Cause somebody left me. Okay, who left me? Carlo. Okay. Look at that's what I was on the show with. But I'm trying to leave me, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I just went over here. Really, he ain't leaving me, really, you know what I'm saying? I just told him, all right, nigga, we're going to go to the show or whatever, nigga, Bitch. you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I ended up driving, right. and then I'm going to drive back. Right. So Lowe was like, shit, man, damn, I hate to goddamn be in this goddamn airport, man. I'm tired of being in the airport. I said, well, shit, I'm going to goddamn drive back shit in the morning. He was like, shit, you trying to drive back tonight? I was like, Shit, man, I really wasn't trying to drive. He was like, shit, fuck it, nigga, shit, we drive, trying to drive. I was like, you know what, Carlos? You want to go back? We'll go tonight, no problem. Right. I'm Chris Jones. I'm the friend. Right. You drive. I'm Chris Eddie Dom Jones. I'm, you, you Carlos, I'm on the road with Carlos Miller. Ain't nothing, Carlos. You want to ride drive. back? Come on, ride with me. They do it. But we had to take the rental car back, right? Right, Lowe's? Motherfucker, <laughs> ain't said nothing, cause he know he wrong. Goddamn. Let me tell you, DC. <laughs> Woo, Lord have mercy, Jesus. This boy, look. Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right, I right. remember cause it was raining, it was raining so hard. Right. Man, as soon as the show was over with, bruh, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We leave, and we had to take the runner car back to the airport, you know what I'm saying? Right. And we coming around the curb, bro, you know what I'm saying? And some just went off in my head like, like, We went to sleep. No, it was just okay. like it was hydroplane a little bit, cause I wasn't supposed to drive the car, okay. you know what I'm saying? You talking about getting high on a plane because I won't put him in trouble. Because I, I got left. You know what I'm saying? Ty's ball. Ty's balder than these bitches pussy around here. I'm telling you. Look here. DZ, when I came around that little curve. What'd you do? That motherfucker kept going. And then I saw the wall. I said, see? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. And when it hit the wall, I said, damn. Then I said, I'm all right. I opened the door. Vroom, 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 vroom. I'm like, damn, I'm stuck in there. I was like, damn. Shit. And I looked up, uh, maybe like, I think about like three, four cars pulled over, white dudes pulled over, construction motherfucker right. pulled over like, 
Hey, I think you can back out if I if I can get the stick, if I can get the um, if I can get the plank and put it down. I said, all right, go ahead, put it down. Now I'm calling Los right now. I said, Los, man, I had a fucking accident. And that nigga, I thought you were behind me. I said, man, I had an accident right now, bro. Oh, Come so on, y'all I gotta help you get this shit out the car. Yeah. Huh? This is two different cars. I'm so taking it back to the we have car. an accident. Hold on. <laughs> so, okay, all right, all right. So look, so look, when he, co he coming back, right? So right. he coming back. By the time he coming back now, the dude that put the plank back there, he's like, I got the plank back there. If you want it, you want to back it on up? I said, hell yeah. Get in there, I'm like, vroom, vroom. As soon as I did like this, you know what I'm saying, scoot it back a little bit, I said, oh yeah, vroom, vroom, vroom. I'm out in the, in the road, nigga. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm dirty too, nigga. Got through drinking, I was drinking. You gotta go. I was drinking, I was gonna chill till the morning. Right. Somebody had to go. Right. Here we go. Right. <laughs> so Bro, right. When I got the car out of the road, <laughs> Lowe's coming back around now. You know right. what I'm saying? When he come back around, I said, man, how you doing, Lowe's? Man, what's up, bro? I love you, bro. My life flashed before my eyes. Lowe's said, man, get your hands off me, man. Ain't shit wrong with you, man. The car right here. I said, man, fuck you, man. You gonna sit up and act like that? I swear to God, I'm not lying. So we go ahead, we took the car back to the rental car place. I swear to God, y'all sit up here lying, bro. You know I ain't lying to you. Oh my God, have mercy. Y'all sit up here lying. I'm fuck you up, okay. though. Okay. Why you in here? Let's get to it, let's get to it. Let's get to it then. He ain't telling you, Lord, have mercy, man. I'm gonna do what I say. Okay, man, I'm gonna do what I say. DC, DC, when I seen the nigga, he was crying, man. He was crying. I went crying. I went crying. I went crying. I went crying. You crying. That nigga cried, man. That nigga cried, man. Oh my that God, nigga cried like a motherfucker. Oh my God, how mercy. Uh, I miss you, man. I see my life now. That nigga was crying. That nigga was crying when he man, said that shit. Man, look, I knew he was gonna leave that boy. Man, look, bro. Look, anyway, look, anyway, bro, bro. The car intact, you know what I'm saying? It was a big old boom on the side, you know what I'm saying? I promise you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nigga cried like a motherfucker. Where you been, man? I love you, man. I see my life now. We like five hours. Get Listen. the fuck off me, look, man. Look, we five hours. We five hours away. Look, we five hours away. You talking about where you been, Bruh, we start riding, look, look, we start riding about an hour. We start riding, we look. The crazy part is that's exactly what that this, nigga said. That this. nigga said, where you been? This. <laughs> you know I had an accident before when I had lost my memory, but I had remembered that I had forgot. You know what I'm saying? This nigga ain't lost his motherfucking right, memory. Right, this right, nigga is right, so the whole story. He's no. so full of shit, man. Man, this is dog. Okay, can we get to it? Yeah. Let's get to it. Let's tell you how to get to this, man. Right. So we ride still, maybe right. like another 45 minutes, maybe. So you got to have a terrible man. accident. We in Kentucky now, you know what I'm saying? Why the fuck did I get in this car with you, Because we coming from Ohio, you know what I'm right. saying? I thought y'all would come from Alabama, nigga. Nah, we was in Ohio. Bro, I'm from man. Alabama. Look at this. Check this out. We ride. So you, 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 you listen, 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 in Ohio, you ain't even got out. Listen, listen, we here. We in Kentucky now, right? Okay. Bruh, it's raining, and Carlos said, he's that. Man, what made you drive this car? I said, what the fuck you mean what made me drive this car? I said, no, chill out, man, because I'm still well, trying so to tell him I had an accident. So he don't believe I had an accident. He said, he, said, he said, the car good? I said, yeah, the car good. Why wouldn't the car be good? He said, because the lights on the dashboard off. I ain't even looking at the dashboard because I'm still shook from the accident. I'm just trying to make sure I stay focused. I look at the dashboard, I said, oh, the lights off. I said, the alternator. So I turn the headlights off. Soon as I turn the headlights off, low jump over me like, motherfucker, what you doing? I said, I'm trying to save the battery. He said, boy, I don't give a damn about no battery, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I said, okay. So you're not so finna the car this. together. And then I turn the lights on. And then the car slowed down. He was like, oh shit, we ain't nowhere around no gas stations, nothing. I said, I told you. I turned the lights back off. <laughs> I turned my phone on. <laughs> Literally, I got my cell so phone, phone on. Am I lying, Lowe's? So your phone is the headlights. My cell phone is the headlights now. You know what I'm saying? It's damn much going down. <laughs> so you Bruh, we, is, we is in the mountains, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm so Lowe's glad. said, man, what the fuck is going on, bro? Don't do this shit, dog. I have a plane ticket. I said, bitch, I know you hollering in my goddamn car, goddamn it. <laughs> But look, I already know. I'm already prepared. Right. I'm already prepared because I already know something was wrong when I had the accident. Right. I'm just trying to get to the exit right quick and we ain't trying to get pulled over right right here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not in this car. Uh, Not right now. God damn it, we get to the exit, bruh. The exit say like two miles. I said, Los, this motherfucker is not goddamn it, might not make it. I'm gonna just see what's up. You just and I hit it. that bitch like 120, yeah. goddamn it. Like, Los was like, oh, he just put on the seatbelt. He said, I'm good, nigga. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I said, I'm good too, nigga. I said, I'm good too, bitch. Don't you worry about nothing. We gonna get them, nigga. Right, right, and I'm trying to go as fast as I can in case the car got the coast. You know what I'm saying? Right, bro, we finally right. get up the hill and it started to go out again. I was like, come on, baby. Come on now. Right. Shit. Lo said, man, this car ain't shit. And you ain't shit. I said, all right. Don't you worry about nothing. Don't you worry about nothing. We gonna get up here. Man, we got up the hill. And soon we came in the gas station. I swear to God. I said, I told you, boy. I told you, boy. We ain't have another inch to go. Right. 
big hit. We literally pulled up right there at the gas pump, right there. I right. said, yeah, bitch. What now the what the you got to say? We need gas for the ultimate <laughs> going now. <laughs> but we had to get off the road. Wait, wait a minute. We <laughs> are tell you the only we, fucking thing that saved us, nigga. The fuck we the only thing Who's that, front of us, us, only thing front that of saved us, us was the motherfucking gas station that we pulled up in was on the hill directly across from a hotel. Right. So when we pull up to this goddamn gas station, go I don't the know post. what the fuck we gonna do at the gas it's station. Raining so it's look, raining hard. It's raining hard. I said, nigga, <laughs> fuck this shit. It's raining hard. The police was right there, Los. Exactly. And when the police were right there, I said, we gotta go. I tried to pull off again. Los said, bitch, we can't go nowhere. I said, we can't stay Where here. I swear to God, we can't so stay look, here. Where are you going? We get the away from the car. Go ahead. We on the hill. Drove, the hotel, bro. like the hotel, like right here. The gas station, like on the hill, right here. So we gotta goddamn go coast down the hill and just coast into the coast fucking into hotel. The hotel. Nigga, this the worst Motel Six I ever seen. It oh, looked yeah. like El Chapo yeah. Trap House in that yeah. motherfucker. Facts. It's all type of motherfuckers walking around. Now keep in mind, it's about damn near three in the morning. Oh, and so this is motel with everybody outside. And man, it's so much foot traffic around this bitch. I'm like, <laughs> man, ain't no fucking way. Yeah. You, you know, know what foot traffic is. That's the kind of hotel you go to get a room and end up buying some pussy in that bitch, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Them type of hotels right there. Hell no, come on now. My real dogs don't pay for cash. Stop that. So look. Why, why, why? I'm just talking about Tila. Oh, stay at this goddamn Motel 6, man. So just so happened the exit that we fucking coasted off on, it was a fucking like an auto shop off that bitch, but it's kind of like off in the woods. So the nigga, I said, shit, the alternator out. I, we already know that shit. In the rental car. I was like, nigga, buy a battery. We could buy a battery and then we can see if we can get to this goddamn shop. Right. Man, we get to this shop, it's some of them strange Red looking nicks. ass rednecks, man, but they nice as a motherfucker. They mm. buy niggas sodas and y'all don't get a burger from down the street. Man, I swear I thought they were finna hang up. But this to... shit in the middle of the woods, it just like, woods around this like motherfucker. Like literally, nigga. But this our last hope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said low. This the is last it? hope? Hey. Is it? Bro, hey. this shit all the way up the hill, nigga, in the middle of nowhere. Ain't no. nothing popping after no. this. And this white man be like, Y'all gotta stay for dinner. We no. gotta stay for dinner. I already knew <laughs> from, ain't nobody. Look, Listen, I already knew something was wrong, dog. We ain't seen nobody since last night. They oh, were trying yeah, to get right. us. They were trying to yeah. get us fat, like them cartoons, like Bug Bunny, when they be getting them the carrots and shit like that. Dog. They Man, we and it was all your fault, Chris. Hold on, let's get to the point. Look, I we still ain't got that. Goddamn! I needed the alternator. Man, we okay. get to these white people. <laughs> we get to these white people shop. Man, we in that motherfucker about ten minutes. The white dude go back in there. He said, "I can get you fixed up. Get it fixed up." Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck gotta be wrong with your car before you can get it fixed up? Right, but, right, right. But we gonna get it. We gonna get it fixed up. You got it right. You got it right. Man, so we, I was like, these motherfucking nice as hell. Then I looked around, they came back and they were like, think we can get a picture? I was like, for what? <laughs> well, they say you just got off for MTV. Oh, <laughs> I said, I told you. I told you he was somebody. Oh, shit. That's I told the crazy shit, man. We you way told up in the fucking middle of Tennessee somewhere in the woods. Woods. And that motherfucker watched Wild and Out. Man, he had his little son. His son told me I done took pictures yeah. with everybody at yeah. the goddamn shop. And guess what? They got us fixed, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that motherfucker came out there like he was finna charge us of the strength, bro. We man. like, man, that motherfucker fucked up, man. He named a bunch of shit. I don't know what this prank gonna be. That man came out there, he said, hell, you owe me about $264. I'm oh, like, that motherfucker got there about 364. Oh, 64. Oh, boy, you had that. Man, you had that. With interest, get man, your ass out there. But I went to the shop. This car ain't never ran that good since he had it. That yeah, motherfucker was running I'm amazing. Man, so he fixed alternating. Man, that nigga fixed everything. That's the real shit. Man, that motherfucker got the pulling spark plugs out and all kind of shit. Hell yeah, he got it fixed up. You got a number? We got it. We didn't send that we'll, shit. That's the thing about it. We'll never find that place again. You'll never see it yeah. again. Damn. Then when we were leaving, they was like, I mean, Los was just like, see, boy, I told you everybody ain't like that. I said, I know. So when they left, they was like, see you later, niggas. <laughs> I said, y'all ain't shit. I want to talk to that nigga, bro. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> Every time I come with the truth. Fucked up, man. Hey, man. That's DC, cool, man. Roy got a new comedy special coming out, man. When? Yeah, man. Um, October 29th, Comedy Central in Perfect Mexico. Hey, I can't wait to see that shit. How long? Uh, 
Paramount Plus. Yeah, about all. Nah. October 29th. Bro, I know you ain't getting no shout outs on that bitch, so you gotta shout your people out on this show so they'll know that you ain't forgot them. Ooh. Like the people, like Uncle Derek and them, the people who, who believed in you and shit. They already know. If they mad because I ain't say their name on this shit, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Florida and them, though. Okay, bet. Damn you. You graduated? Yeah. 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 It took me five, but I got it. It took me five. It took me five, yeah. It's supposed you did. to take you five. You supposed HBCU? to do some, yeah. 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 I'm with the Hampton. Yeah, okay, I don't give a fuck. Mm. Fuck some hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, respectfully. Yeah, respectfully. Yeah, I'm self-educated. You finished? Yeah. I'm just saying. No, I'm self-educated. I'm just bullshit. I just went there. His mama ain't finished the third grade. You see what I'm talking about, dog? <laughs> bro, ain't finished the third nah, grade? Nah, bro, dog, dog. Fly, don't do that. Now why you be doing fly, that? Fly, don't do that, fly. Yeah. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Nigga talking about, hey, man, low man, but life for that before my eyes, man. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> see, man. The, boy, the thing about it, man, he really said that shit. The nigga said, Lowe, where you been, nigga? I was like, nigga, I was just right in front of you, nigga. I turned around at the fucking... <laughs> this is the most dramatic nigga you will ever meet, man. Yeah, man. This is, this is fun, man. I appreciate y'all for fucking nigga, with me, man. Come on, man. I Don't let this be shit. the last time you come through the track, I mean, man. Bro, you're one of the funnest, shit. cleverest comedians in the country, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I'll we had to get brother. you on here, man, and let you know that you dope as hell, and like we salute you, man. I appreciate I'm, it, man. Matter of fact, also, also, shout out to Birmingham, Alabama, man. Birmingham, Alabama made me, man. Where you from? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, shout out to your part of Alabama. Alabama. My part, Aliceville, Alabama. You don't know You ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Doing severe weather reports. That's one of the, <laughs> you know, certain cities you only hear about when the tornado coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Douglas County, Montgomery County, Ellisville, Red Clay. I'm <laughs> like, where the fuck is this? <laughs> but yeah, Ellisville, we fuck with them. Right. Man, they got damn. But y'all check me out too, man, on that damn. Uh, new season that roast me on all deaf, you know what I mean? They, uh, they came to Atlanta, got some of the funniest comedians in the country, you know what I mean? And I got and I got to say this, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is my first time coming on the 85 South show, you know what I'm saying? Bitch, I supposed to be here. But look here, I'm gonna tell you this right here, this real talk. Carlos Miller, Roy Wood Jr., and DC Young Fly, all are three of the funniest comedians in the country. And Appreciate that, DC. Yeah. <laughs> and bitch, I'm the other one. That's why I need y'all to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Jones funny, man. This is how real comedians be, man, for real. Yeah, y'all, man. y'all know, yeah, y'all know I, used to, I used to sit around, watch shows and shit like that to see how comedians were gonna be when they get all around each other and shit like that, man. You know what I mean? But it's real magic. We got real energy, you know okay, what I mean? Right? No, it's just dope what y'all doing, what y'all created over here for yourselves, because it really is a blueprint for other cats, but y'all didn't have nobody to really even look at to build this. Like, it's just instinct and intuition, and you just get folks around you. And then DC, I was, fuck who I, I was talking to Stilo from, um, nigga from Ridiculousness. Yeah, Stilo Brim. I was talking to Stilo about, about you and how you used to come out to LA and were like fucking, get in the gym and get on fucking stage. Like, regardless of whatever you was doing on IG, mm-hmm. you still like, it's always dope to see somebody who didn't crack one code, but still trying to come back and do everything else the yeah, way yeah. you need to be oh, yeah. done, man. Like, you used to come in tripping on Tuesdays. Back when the comedy store still had the black, the black night. Right, right. The chocolate <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. Oh, the chocolate right. Sunday. This is the chocolate Sunday. This that shit. That's that good. shit, man. Nigga wins this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and just, you know, being a cat from the South and understanding that transition from being going from the South to being out on the West Coast and being on stage and then just got to make sure that folks come to you. It's like, you know, you see certain cats, you go, all right, that nigga going to be all right. Yeah. I don't need to watch no more of him. He, oh, he here doing that? Yeah. Oh, that was a good joke. I don't need to see nothing else he doing ever again. Yeah. And then gonna be all right. And then sure enough, years later, sitting on the couch with you, man. Like, it's it's oh, fucking yeah. dope, man. So I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate OG yeah. like these motherfuckers, you think what I'm saying? Who helped pay the way, you feel me? And by me knowing that, you still gotta hit those, those, those open mics and really gather the material. I, I knew I had to go do that in order for me to be like, all right, I'm a comedian now because this is what the OGs did. You just can't, you can't just come out here and yeah. do some new shit. I only, reinvent some shit by being on stage. I just can't come out and do some shit by like, all right, I'm entertaining now. Fuck yeah. that, the OG did it this way, bet, I'm finna go do the same yeah. thing with the OG did, and then I'm add my sauce to it. Yeah, yeah, and then add yeah. your sauce, cause it's like you gotta do all the weird fucking rooms, man. Like I remember 
you know the fucking, you know used to be a good ass time is doing comedy shows for dope boys. You talking about dude, a good ass bitch? I just did shit to yesterday. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> good ass time. Y'all boys have moved up around this bitch because I remember all of them were broken shit, shit right here. Y'all have moved up around this bitch. Go ahead. Do y'all thing. Even if they ain't have your <laughs> money, it was still a good time. Shit. Damn. Because they, they pay you in dope. Damn. Mm. What kind of dope? They paying me in no goddamn dope. Nah, I ain't never taken it. Oh, OK. Like, I was about to say, I'm I wasn't, like, wasn't around for that Indian. shit. I ain't Roy never did. Roy told me about one show. Roy, you called me one night. I don't know if you remember. You was like, Smoke, they just got some new cocaine. Hey, hey man, we're going to get the fuck out of here. I said, Roy, get out of here, too. Roy, don't take that shit. Hey, that nigga full of shit. He ain't got no smell of shit. Get my lighter, man. That nigga ain't got no smell of shit. Yes, y'all ain't doing it? Where's my goddamn pizza? Where you been? That shit was hilarious. What we doing? I'm reading this paper. What did that paper say? November 6th. November 6th. We're going to be in Greensboro, man, at the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. Yes. In Greensboro, North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina. What day? November 6th. That's right. <laughs> Hit the website, 85shopshow.com.